Hello and welcome to Real Actors, Real Answers. My name is David Thompson and I have a great person to introduce you to, Michael Leskowski. He is an actor and a director. He is from Appleton, Wisconsin. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, David. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, um, tell me or tell us a little bit about yourself, your acting, your directing, your, your life story. Well, I originally began in theater when I was about 10 years old. I started in doing community theater and I got hooked automatically. I mean, from the very first rehearsal, I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so therefore I just continued it all through high school, uh, college. I eventually got my bachelor's degree in theater from UW Oshkosh. And I actually uh, started a theater company in Oshkosh, Wisconsin called Vintage Theater. Uh, we are still going. I'm currently uh, still the artistic director of it. And we've been going for about, uh, we started in 2013 and then we had to take a break obviously because of the pandemic like every other theater company did. <laughs> <laughs> so we were dark for about three years, for about uh, two years or so, but then, but we we began uh, doing shows again and uh, we're going stronger than ever. Good, I'm so glad to hear that. It warms my heart, you know, because <clears throat> I was actually, I don't know about you, but I was like almost lamenting those three, two, three years because it's like, how do we breathe? <laughs> you know, um, vintage theater, is that what it's called? Vintage I theater, love, yes. What's the story behind the word vintage in this aspect? Oh. Actually, it's it's kind of funny. It's I never really intended to start a theater company. I just had a play that I had always wanted to do. It was a it's a play called The Cemetery Club by Ivan Menchel. And it's a wonderful story. The it tugs at your heartstrings and it's funny and just a great play all around. And I've always wanted to do it. And I suggested it to a friend of mine who was also the um executive director of a local community center. It's now closed now, unfortunately, but at the time they were trying to have live performances at the community center. They had just a very small stage, not much to work with, but I gave him the play, told him about it, and he said that he loved the play as well and that their organization would love to sponsor it and produce it. So uh, they did. We got great audiences, a lot of great feedback. And uh, b just because of legality purposes, I couldn't I... use the community center's name. So I just had to make up a name, almost kind of on the spot. <laughs> and I, off the top of my head, I just picked vintage theater, thinking that this would just be a one and done thing. And uh, then uh, people started asking, well, are you going to do another show? Are you going to do another art gallery? And did a play called Art by Yasmina Risa. Then we partnered with a... Yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You said the word, the play called Art? Art, yes. Was that on Broadway? It was, it actually won the Tony Award. That is a fantastic, I didn't know it was copyright free. Did you have to get the copyright? Uh, we had to get the rights for it, yes. Okay, because I remember Judd Hirsch. Wow, what a name I haven't thought of in a long time from Taxi. He was in, I saw it in Detroit. Um, he was in art. That is so cool. Oh my gosh, it's, to see Judd Hirsch. It's a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. It's funny, but it drives home a, you get, I've got the chills now. I haven't seen that in years. How did that go? It went great because the cool thing about that play is that it's very easy to produce and we were able to do it right in an actual art gallery, which I, th which I think people absolutely loved because they're just like, they were able to see some local artists and also really support. Um, it's a local organization called the Art Garage. And so we were able to perform right among the works of art, which people I think really liked. Exactly. Now, what genius, that's a genius. That, that's what that is, contacting. How did that happen when you contacted the, who gave you the, what was the idea behind, I think I'll contact an art gallery. Was that your idea? That was my idea, yes. 
I just took a shot in the dark, basically, <laughs> which is kind of how I like have done a lot of my shows in that I've just kind of taken a shot in the dark and either proposed something to a theater company or proposed just to a friend who has a connection to a theater company. And that's kind of how I've made my career. Just, you just, you know the right people and you just, sometimes you're just in the right place at the right time. <laughs> It's like you're prepared, but you're unprepared, right? You exactly, just gotta, like yeah. you said, take a shot in the dark. Yes, and you just go with the flow wherever you can. I like that. Just like your cat took a shot in the dark and he's bringing the light in. <laughs> it's fine. I love cats. Um, no, that's wonderful. Now, you mentioned earlier when we started, um, you were hooked when you, um, at your first uh, theater audition. Yep. What was your first show? My first show was Peter Pan, and I was playing one of the Lost Boys. I was 10 years old. Okay, that must have been memorable. It was because Peter Pan was actually the first live show that I ever saw. I saw Kathy Rigby, the one and only Kathy Rigby, play Peter Pan when I was five years old. My parent, that was the first like live show my parents took me to see. And during intermission, uh, my dad turned to me and he said, uh, do you like the show? And I just pointed up at the stage and I said, daddy, that's what I want to do. And then five years later, uh, they saw a, an ad in the paper for auditions for young boys to audition for Peter Pan. And my parents are like, hey, would you like to? And I said, yes, I would. I went to the auditions. I got the part and the rest is history. <laughs> I can so relate to that because it was my mother that started me. You know, I'm an artist. I like to draw. And she said, why don't you try out for this Wizard of Oz? And I, I it's like I, <clears throat> in front of people. You know, my, my art was, there's the board and the pencil, you know, it's like, but I tried out and it was like, whew, you know, it gripped my soul. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing like that. Now, you said you were a director, too. Yes. Talk uh, to us how I that. got started in directing was I was going through school and everything, and I first started out as a performance emphasis. So I was going to study to be an actor. That's what I really wanted to do. But I realized eventually throughout my academic career that I wasn't getting a lot of roles. I was getting cast as just very small um, cameo roles. And I kind of got a little frustrated because I was like, this is, like I said, I had been wanting to do this ever since I was five years old. And then I got to myself thinking, well, is there other things maybe I could do in theater? And then I started getting involved in stage management. I found that I loved it. And then I started getting involved in directing. And then I found I even loved that even more. And so then I started doing that. And now I actually direct more than I act. I mean, occasionally I'll get the bug, as they say, to get up on stage and just kind of dust off the cobwebs a little bit because you never lose that feeling. It's like the saying where you never forget your first love. Well, theater was, acting was my first love, it really was. So you just never forget it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> where is this vintage theater located at again? We are located in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, we just did, um, in September, we wrapped up our season with A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. And that was probably our most successful show to date. We had sellout crowds every single night. So let me get this straight. You directed Shakespeare? Uh, I was in it, actually. <laughs> who, did you, who did you play? Demetrius. Oh, how, how did you like that? I loved it. And I was very surprised when I got the role because Demetrius is one of the young lovers. And... I, <laughs> and this was just my own insecurity, but I, when the director called me and offered me the role, she's been my dearest friend for many, many years. Christy and I have done several shows together. And when she called me and offered me the part, I said, are you sure? Because I, I'm 37 years old. I mean, like, I don't get a chance to play young lovers much anymore. So I just kind of was like, okay, that kind of, those roles are past me now. I, I can say goodbye to those roles. But then I got the role of Demetrius and I was like, um, 
okay, if you, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll shave, I'll, I'll, I'll wear my hair up so I can look younger. I'll, I'll work out. I, I'll do what I can. <laughs> if you, you were motivated can. to take better care of yourself, weren't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that something? I mean, I've noticed that, you know, when we are I'm speaking to the same heart here, when we are in a play, in a film and doing, you know, all of a sudden we rise up and we're more disciplined with our eating, with our exercise, with our, you know, everything we, you know, and you're boom, 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 boom. You know, it's like Tom Hanks in Castaway, you know, uh -huh. there were, uh, after he did that film, he was caught. I'm not making fun of him. I'm just pointing out a thing. It's like actors are, we think different. It, there was a picture of him and he was pretty fat and he was chowing down on McDonald's. It's mean, <laughs> He's no different. I mean, we love it so much. Hey, you know what? I have a responsibility now. I have this role and automatically our self-esteem goes up, mm -hmm. you know? Um, how did you like the language and how did you get through it? Oh, uh, well, um, what I did to try to better understand it was I went through each and every single line every one of my lines and basically had to translate it. So when he said this line, I, I went to my index or my glossary and I said, okay, that's what this word means. That's what that word means. And then I just kind of piece the sentences together and I'm like, oh, he's saying that. Okay, I got you. Like when he says, for example, you spend your passion on a misprized mood. Basically he's saying, um, you are way off base here, honey, or something like that, you know? <laughs> I love how Shakespeare wrote, you know, it's not necessarily how they spoke, but he took the language, you know, of the day and he turned it into poetry. And my favorite part about uh, playing a Shakespeare role is obviously I had a lot of friends come and see the play and every single one of them said about the same thing that they didn't really um, understand what was being said, but they knew what was going on though. They, under, they could follow the story at least. And I just, for some reason that just made me so excited, so, so overjoyed to hear that, that they still enjoyed it, even though they didn't necessarily understand what was being said. I, I don't know why, but it just overjoyed me. <laughs> Okay, now as a director, how thinking director mind here, how do you think that they knew what was going on in the scene without necessarily understanding the words? I think a lot of it had to do with our emotions and such like that, because A Midsummer Night's Dream is a comedy and it's probably Shakespeare's best known comedy. So therefore everything was over the top. And I credit that to our director, Christy, who's brilliant. And she had been wanting to do A Midsummer Night's Dream for years. That was like a show on her bucket list, as they say. So we took everything and we made it over the top and over just everything was much, basically. And I think that's what helped people because it was pretty obvious what was the emotions behind it. Like when we were, um, like during our fighting scenes and everything like that, we were doing we were doing flips and flipping each other over and just constantly just everything out of the everything out of the hat basically. <laughs> right. Okay. It must have been beautiful that the costuming and and the scenes and um, there's nothing like Shakespeare. There really isn't. Do you want to do another one? Absolutely. Absolutely. I told Christy, whatever Shakespeare show you direct next, I will audition for it. I really don't care what it is. I, I will do another Shakespeare play in a heartbeat. What, what is Christy's last name? Just out of curiosity. Christy Duby, D-U-B-E-Y. Okay, good. I want to make sure credit where credit is due, you know. Um, what are you working on now? Uh, currently, um, I am days away from auditions for a musical called Man of La Mancha. Oh, excuse me. My friend, John DeMero, he lives in Michigan. He's a spectacular actor. I don't know where to go with that, but, but he is. And he just loves, he's like you. He has a passion. He played Don Quixote, you know? Um, cool. 
and it was an outside theater, which was great. Um, so are you looking forward to directing this? Absolutely. I've, uh, even though I'm more interested in non-musicals, this particular musical has always stuck with me because when I was a child, I heard the song, The Impossible Dream, played on the radio. I didn't even know where it was from, that it was part of a musical, but the song just enchanted me. And I just was so moved by it, just the words and just, just it gave me chills, you know? <laughs> And then after, after a couple of years, I found out that it's from a musical. And then I, I read the synopsis, I listened to the show, and then I've, I've seen like two or three different productions of it. And I'm, I love the show. I really just, I can't say enough good things about this musical. That dream, I mean, that dream, here I go, sorry. Um, that song, to Dream the Impossible Dream is so uplifting, it's so, I don't know where to go with it, you know, because I heard that song too. I didn't know where it was from. I was just captivated by the words. So I want to hear that again. And, you know, it's so, has such energy and so positivity and just, you know. And, and I, I think that's why I like the show a lot, just because it's like, um, and I think that's why it's endured over the years so much because, I mean, it's been on Broadway, it's been revived on Broadway, it's had touring companies, I mean, churches and amateur theater companies and colleges and high schools still do this show. And I think because the character of Don Quixote, he represents something that I think is so needed in this world. Because Don Quixote is so much more than just a whimsical, goofy character who thinks that he's a knight errant. He's a symbol. He's a symbol of the ability to see the good in this world, to see the world not necessarily as it is, but as it could be. And I, I think we all need that. Are you a writer too? I'm not, no. Okay, I was going to say, the way you talk... You're, you're you're probably an excellent director too, but the way you talk, it, it's very um, I don't know. You could be a writer, put it that way, a script writer. Um, Thank you. It's eloquent. Thank you. Is it all cast? Did you get it at all cast yet? Not yet. We have auditions in four days, so oh, that, oh it's ramping very up. Very soon we will have it cast. <laughs> excellent. That's so awesome. Um, no, that's great. What else can I ask you? What else can you tell me? Um, have you done film? I have only done one film. Uh, it was a uh, it was a film called Road to Emmaus, and I was just an extra. I was a shepherd, and I was just in the background milling around with everyone else. And uh, it was just one day of filming. We did. I want to say the scene only was like maybe 15 seconds or 30 seconds at the most, but it took literally all day just to shoot it. And it's like every like five seconds we would, be, we would hear a cut and then they would do some repositioning with either lights or um, a, a tent would have to be moved other ways. And I just, <laughs> and it was my first film I ever did. So I was just looking around going, why is this, so, what, what do we got to do? And <laughs> it's film is the same and yet it's different. It's, it's parallel. Like you have both hands, but two set opposing thumbs, theater <laughs> and film. They're together, but they're separate and they're unique. You can learn in both, both ways. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I'm so glad I did it because it was my first, um, first time I ever got paid for doing a film. Yeah. So uh, it was like, oh my, I, I was in college at the time and I was like, oh my God, am I a professional actor? I'm getting paid. Oh my gosh. I just was like jumping oh. over the moon because <laughs> I mean, for just a day, they paid me $50, but it's like at that time, it was like, I was happy with anything i was like i got paid for acting wow this is awesome <laughs> exactly you know um i remember in new york they i extra work and the casting director told us no you're not an extra you're a background artist you enhance the scene i go well you know <laughs> now i feel good you know um no that's fantastic that's a nice ring to it yeah 
I'm really excited about Man from La Mancha. Um, it will do well. I'm not going to say hope. It will bring down the house. Hmm. And Midsummer Night's Dream, you said that was quite successful. How long did it run? Oh, we only ran for one weekend, unfortunately. Once we saw how many people showed up, we wanted and we actually considered going a second weekend. But unfortunately, with our venue, we weren't able to uh, bring it for a second weekend. So we just had to do it the one weekend, but we were still very happy with it. Excellent. Now, you don't have any formal education per se, do you? Like going to college? for studying acting or do you? I, I do, I have a bachelor's degree in theater from UW Oshkosh. Oh yeah, you told me that, all right. I got caught up in your passion. It's like how you you were five and then you were 10 and here you are today and you, you're just, uh, you have a theater company, which is very impressive. Mm -hmm. I love that, that's wonderful. You, you spread joy and peace and learning and happiness to people, you know. Um, Acting is about taking the ordinary and making an extraordinary. Yes. And one thing that we try to do with vintage theater is we try to do shows that are about contemporary issues. Like, for example, uh, one production we did last year was a play called Two Rooms, which was about a, um, an American journalist who is in um, Iraq during the um, Persian Gulf War. And it is all about, his, and he is actually taken prisoner by, um, by Iraqi soldiers. So the entire play is about him and his, um, his in capture, and also his wife who is back home and is trying to, to do anything to save her husband. And this is, it was a very hard hitting play, but uh, everyone who saw it just absolutely loved it. Everyone was just so moved by it because it was so real. And one of the things that we like to say is that the theater is a representation of real life because, and real life is not always, it's, it's, not, oh, it's not always joyous. It's not always happy. There are some dark parts to it, but we want to include all of that though, just because we believe that theater can truly be that powerful of a medium to really show, to really, get people to see the world as it truly is and also as it could be as well too wow that's beautiful you should write that down it's recorded <laughs> but you should write it down uh, <laughs> what do you look for in an audition because you're going to be auditioning you know different um people very shortly but what do you look for um, basically, when I'm auditioning people, I uh, look at what they are strongest at. Like if a person is a strong singer, I want them to show me that. If they are more of an actor, I want them to show me that. Basically, I just want to see actors for who they are, because it's just like every actor, I don't care what walk of life you come from or how much training you have, each one is strong at some point. I mean, like we have some people who are classically trained in ballet, but we have other people who are trained in tap or modern. We have people who are trained in classic theater, people who are trained in contemporary theater. We all have strengths. And we all bring that to the table because theater is all about collaboration. I mean, like, yes, I am the director. Yes, it is my vision, but I can't do it on my own. <laughs> so that is why I need all of the actors and not just the actors, but my design team, my crew. It's like, everybody brings something to the table. And what I like to think about it is, it's kind of like a smoothie, because it's like, whenever you make a smoothie, you have so many different ingredients that you put in, so many different types of fruit, or so many different like, um, like, like protein powders, or milk, or anything. And then you all mix it together to make something delicious and beautiful. That's exactly what a production is. It's like everybody puts in a little bit and then we all blend it together. And then that's what the audience sees on opening night. So basically I tell actors, just show me what you are the best at because chances are we'll be able to use that in some way. You have just taken the fear out of auditioning. <laughs> the way you explained it, it's very welcoming. <laughs> 
you know? And there is no reason to be, I mean, I know that auditions can be a little intimidating. I've been to many auditions myself. I know how nerve wracking it is because you're constantly thinking about, oh, is this the right song? Is this the right monologue? Oh, did I mess up? Oh, I messed up that line. Oh, it's just like, am I too tall? Am I too short? Am I not young enough? Am I not old enough? Am I not good? Do, do I not look a certain way? And it's like, everyone has all of those thoughts going through their head a million miles a moment. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is there's no need for any of that just because all we want to see is just who you are and what you can bring to the table. And like I said, we all have something that we can bring to the table. You just have to show it what it is. And I always tell people, honesty is the best policy. So, I mean, I know that it's a very common practice for people to embellish or exaggerate on their resumes. There's no need for that. Absolutely no need for that at all. Honesty is always the best policy. <laughs> very true. Very true. Wow. Michael, if um, someone wanted to contact you, how would they do that? Uh, I am available on Facebook. Um, also, they can email me directly. I always have email open. My email address is L-A-S-K-M-J, the number 24, at gmail.com. Okay, thank you very much. And um, does your theater company have a website or a something? We do. Uh, Vintage Theater is available um, on Facebook and Instagram. And we also have a website as well, www.vintagetheater.net. You can see our history there. You can see photos from past productions. And you can also see what we have coming up in our upcoming season. Oh, sweet. Excellent. Um, thank you very much. This has been enlightening, encouraging, and just plain fun. You made this interview a lot of fun. I appreciate you, your time here. Thank you so much, David. It was my pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Happy holidays. And we all look forward to Man from La Mancha. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.